Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you are doing great. I am doing great. It was a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, I didn't get much done here, but I got other things done. So it was a good, productive day. My muscles are not quite as sore as they were yesterday, so maybe I am on the mend. I hope so. Anyway. Well, tonight we are going to do Psalm 36. And Facebook, if I cut out, it's because my phone went dead. I'm like at 14% battery right now. Uh, Seem to be okay on my computer. Okay, so we are going to do Psalm 36. I'm going to read to you what I shared this morning on Facebook. On my page on Awesome Treasures ministry page. Mm, there it is. Read all of it. Maybe I can move it over a little bit. And then move it back over here. Okay. There we go. I can read all of it now. Okay. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's pray to God. Let's invite him into our little chat about uh, Psalms. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. And there is no God like you. You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. We thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. We thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, we know that you are the righteous judge, that we do not have the right to judge people, but you will judge people as the righteous judge. You will judge all unrighteousness according to your truth and not to others' truths, but to yours. And God, we just thank you because you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring and you are faithful, you are trustworthy, God, and you are patient. You want none to perish. You want all to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals to return. We pray for them to remember the relationship that they had with you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and for them to return and repent and to be reconciled. God, we pray for all these people that have that are living in disasters today. God, we just pray that you would be with them that they would feel your presence, that many would come to them to meet their needs, being the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. We pray for all the people that are sick. We just pray, God, that you would heal their bodies, that they would trust your process of healing, God, that you would be with them and that they would feel your presence. And God, we also pray for all people who have lost loved ones, God, over the past few years, the past three years, there's been a lot of loss. So we just lift those people up to you and pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, that they would feel your presence, God, that they would feel your closeness. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's read Psalm 36. I had some trouble with my camera. It was like, it was like flipped. This hand was over here, um, but I got it flipped back around. I couldn't really remember how to do it. Just um, haven't done it in so long. It stayed the same for so long, and then it just decided to flip itself. Who knows? All right, Psalm 36. Man's wickedness and God's perfections. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. So this is another psalm of David. And this is about man's wickedness and God's perfections. 
All right, it is not too terribly long. And there are some study notes. Okay, so we will go ahead and read it. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not, <clears throat> excuse me, he does not abhor evil. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Um, that's a song. I think by third day. Anyway, a lot of times in Psalms, you can find words to Christian music. Um, your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgment are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the fool of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There are workers of iniquity. There the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down and are not able to rise. So he was talking about man's wickedness, and a lot of what he was talking about, I see happening now. And, uh, I think we are on the preface of God's judgment, of seeing God's judgment. And I'm not real sure whether he hasn't already started judging in some places. But we are not to judge. I read this morning, that was my morning reading, is that we are not to judge because God will judge. And we are not to uh, try to get vengeance because vengeance is God's. So we need to stay on a righteous path with God. We need to stay on the narrow path with Jesus and let him lead the way. All right, let's see what the study notes say about this psalm. And if you have any comments about this psalm, if there's anything that stands out to you, then please put them in the comments. But don't don't put like just letters, put words in there so I can understand what you're talking about. The poet extolled God's great love against the background of human evil. The psalm begins and ends with references to the wicked. In between these references is a poignant, poignant I don't know how to say that word, poignant, I don't think that's how you say it. All right, well, excuse me, right at this moment, I can't think of how you say that. It doesn't sound right. Description of the Lord's love and mercy. For mercy or loving kindness, steadfast love, for the shadow of your wings, um, God's unchanging love is seen in his constancy or faithfulness. His justice, his deliverance, or, persever or preservation, and his abundant provision. God is the source of life and light. The abundance of his love is poured out on all those who know him, referring to personal, intimate relationship. Wow, that's something that I talked to God about yesterday. 
was um, how well he knows me. Like God knows us so well. That might be what I shared with you last night. I don't remember. I think I did. Yeah. So he does. He knows us so well. Okay. Well, now I am going to share with you what I wrote uh, this morning. It was this morning. So during my quiet time this morning, this song and message popped into my head. I haven't heard this song in a long time. And I don't know when the last time I heard it on the radio, but it is, um, what is it called? Even the Impossible. It's called Even the Impossible uh, by Mac Brock. I really like these lyrics. Even the Impossible is Possible with You is one of the lines of the lyrics. Many times in our lives, we find ourselves standing at the foot of a tall mountain or a hard challenge trying to figure out how to climb the mountain or navigate the challenge ahead. In my life, I have learned that God knows all the details, the solutions, and the outcomes of, of everything that we face. He, he knows it all. He even sends his helpers to help. I have learned to trust him in all things, big, medium, and small. I believe this is one reason that we are here, to learn to love and trust God above all others, above any human, to trust him first, to put him first, to love him more. He wants us to know that he is the God of the impossible. He has proven this to me personally over and over again. He has been faithful and trustworthy all my life. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. People, time is short. It is, if you're on the fence, it is time to make a decision. Do not stay on the fence. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. He doesn't. He wants none to perish. He wants all to be saved through Jesus. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today or right now. Right this second would be great. Okay, so that is what I shared today about the God of the impossible. Even the impossible is possible with you. Even the impossible is possible with God. God is mighty and powerful and magnificent and miraculous in all of his ways. We don't even understand sometimes the level of love that God has for us and how much he cares for us, but he does. So let's see, how are we going to share the salvation message tonight? And I was a tiny bit late, but I am not going to be on here for very long. I don't know where all my, oh, there's some. Hmm. See this one. I didn't know where all my things had gone. Your ticket to heaven. And this is another good news tracks. Kind of like we did, I think we did a good news tracks last night. Anyway, your ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it, and that's a good thing, because you could never afford to buy it. It's free, but only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, he also wants you to live with him in heaven forever. Forever, like this picture behind me. 
That's the New Jerusalem. That's a picture of the New Jerusalem. And there's John. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket. No one wants to go to hell where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9. But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong. We have all sinned, haven't we? God's word says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1, 8. Sin pollutes. It makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes. It separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So who paid for it? Wait, there's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born, to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, which is all of us, that he might bring us to God, 1 Peter 3.18. When God laid on him the iniquity, sins, of us all, Isaiah 53.6, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that is in Mark 15.34. The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place in mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today. So you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life. Your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 so that is so wonderful. You can become a new person, born of God, to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So do you want it? It is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3.36 Just as a man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, whoever has the Son, Jesus has life, 1 John 5, 12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. So I'm going to say this prayer, and I'm going to leave a spot where you can repeat after me. Oh, my little fan's not even on me. No wonder I'm hot. I don't even have it pointed on me was pointed on my computer. Okay, here we go. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins. Paid my debt in full and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you.
Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, remember that John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? I really hope that you said this prayer and that you accepted Jesus into your life in your heart. And uh, if you did, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now my new brother or sister in Christ. And the angels are rejoicing. They rejoice over one soul that returns to God. And um, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his Son. If you want a closer relationship, a growing relationship with God, then read his word every day. Spend some time with him in his word, in prayer, and in praise. I usually am listening to praise music getting to set it up that's okay because sometimes i have a praise song going on in my head all right well it is time for me to give you the blessing from god and to get off of here so i can get some more things done tonight Uh, number 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We can all use some peace. If you have any prayer requests, if you have any uh, questions, please put them in the comments. I don't always say that. I, I don't always think about it, but you are welcome to put things in the comments, whatever you think. If there's a verse that you think, wow, would you, you know, look this up and say it on your ministry time, then I would be so glad and honored to do that. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pray and get off of here. God, we just come to you and we thank you for this opportunity that we can come together and learn your word, God, that we can read it, that we can take it in, that we can look at these study notes, God, that we understand, God, that you are faithful and that we can trust you, God in all things, in the big things in our lives, in the medium things, and in the small things, God, that you are always with us at the bottom of those mountains that just look too steep to climb, and that you can always be with us when we are challenged, God, and many times you will send us helpers to help us out, or many times you will just show us the way. God, we just thank you for that. We thank you for all the many things that you do, for all the blessings, for the protection, for the provision that you give us daily, God. I pray for each family member here. I just pray, God, that you would lead in God and direct them every day and that they would seek you. They would seek your face through uh, your word, reading your word, prayer and praise, God that they would get connected with other believers, God, also. God, we just uh, we just pray that you would give us the boldness that we need to share your truths and to share the gospel of Jesus, that you would help us not to be quiet, that you would help us not to sit down, that when we face opposition, God, of things that are not true and are not of you, God, that we will stand firm for what we believe and what we know to be your truths, God. Because we know that one day you will judge everyone by your truths, not by 
other people's truths, but by yours, by your word and what you have told us and by what you want us to learn. God, we just pray that, um, we just pray for the lost and we pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped, God, that so many people would be saved this year, God, that many would turn back to you also as prodigal children. God, we just pray. We pray for all the ones out there that are supposed to be in the flock with Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I am going to get off of here. So, uh, God bless all of you and your families abundantly and much love. Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I won't be here tomorrow night. I will be with the youth. Um, much love <laughs> and cyber hugs till I see you again. I just went blank. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Good night.